Hey everybody, uh, we're going to do a product review on my jet, I'm sorry, on my Harbor Freight lathe. Uh, this is the 12 inch by 33 and 3 eighths inch uh, lathe. Uh, so it's got a 12 inch swing and 33 inches uh, roughly um, in, um, in length. Uh, so you can do some rather long, long um, stock. Uh, so to start off with the basics, uh, it's got a three-quarter horsepower motor, a one by eight TPI spindle. The Morse taper is a MT2, uh, which is very common. Both of those are very common, so you can find accessory accessories uh, for this lathe really easily. Uh, they're not hard to find. You can find them just about anywhere, um, including um, you know woodcraft and and online stuff really easily. Uh, the RPM range is 600 to 20. 400. Uh, it comes with a 12 inch tool rest, um, two, uh, or I'm sorry, the, the live center and the drive center, a rather large face plate. Um, so you can do some stuff with this, um, but I'm probably gonna have to buy some smaller ones because uh, this is just too big for bowl work, which is gonna be the majority of what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, it comes with two spindle wrenches and a um, knockout tool uh, to knock out your live center and drive center. Uh, so that's what it comes with. Uh, it's stamped steel legs, uh, which are extremely lightweight. The whole, the shipping weight on this is like 175 pounds. Um, you can put this thing together by yourself. I did it by myself. It is the getting the, the bed and I took the tailstock off and I took the tool rest off. Uh, so the bed and the head uh, are, I mean, it's, it's cast iron, so it's heavy, uh, but you can do it by yourself, uh, if you absolutely need to. Um, but <laughs> safety, this is kind of what we yesterday was safety day. So, uh, safety, safety, safety. If you got two people to do it, get two people to do it. Cause it is heavy. Don't hurt yourself. It's not worth it. Um, but <laughs> if you're stupid like me, you do it by yourself cause you just couldn't wait to, to get to get it working. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, I've had some time to test it out. I did a rough turned uh, 10 inch green bowl uh, a few days ago. Um, now it was rough cut using my chainsaw, so it was very uh, misshapen, uh, you know, not very round. Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was shaking this thing when I first started on it. Uh, to, to get this thing to not shake, especially with large, large stock, larger bowls, you got to have the sandbags at the bottom. Uh, I got a piece of plywood with 250 pounds of sand, sand on that, and that seems to be enough weight to not um, to let this thing not shake. Um, excuse me. Uh, so, you know, that's 250 pounds. I think each bag was three bucks, so that's not a very uh, that's not a whole lot of money and, and extra cost. Um, so the, the uh, speed range is a little fast, uh, 600 as the low end, uh, if you're gonna be doing uh, larger bowls, uh, especially when they're just chainsaw, rough cut, um, it was a little scary. I'm a beginner and I'm sure most of you guys watching this are beginners like me, um, and you're looking at this lathe as a cheap way to get into it, which is the way I am. Uh, especially when you have to buy all the tools and chucks and everything, this, it adds up getting into turning. Um, so. 600 is a little fast, so that's kind of a negative. It is doable. Um, a lot of people do it. Uh, there's a lot of lays that, that 600 is, is, is the slow end. So a lot of people do it. You can do it. It just takes a little bit of time to get comfortable with it. Uh, it took me about a half an hour to get kind of used to it and knew, know how my tools were cutting uh, and basically know my limitations with it. Um, so once you get used to it, it's not bad. Um, but Direct out of the box, live centers met up directly straight, uh, so there was no um, no worry about that. Um, let's see, uh, it does does come with an extendable tool rest, um, but really the only thing you're going to be using this for is for larger bowls if you're doing an outfeed bowl. Um, now I turn my lathe. Um, 90 degrees uh, with that 10 inch chainsaw bowl and it was shaking the head pretty bad so 
I don't think I'm going to be using the outfeed or the outboard um, at least the 90 degrees. I have not tried it uh, a full 180 degrees, um, but that'll be something I do in the future. I, I just don't have a, it's no point in doing it right now um, until I have a bigger stock. Uh, once I can get a 12 inch piece out here and see how it works, then, then I'll see it, um, what it comes like. But the, it's all cast iron. It comes with some nice oily residue all over the whole thing that you got to clean off. Make sure you put some wax on that. Um, the tool rest itself, it is a little big uh, for bowl work, but it is usable. But I need I'm a, I am going to get a smaller one. Um, but right off the bat, I took the powder coating off the tool rest, flattened it, and um, put some wax on that, uh, so that my tools ride much smoother. Um, there's no spindle lock. Uh, you have to use the spindle wrenches to get your chucks off and everything, um, which isn't great, but it's not a not a huge not a huge problem. Uh, you know, obviously spindle lock is much, much better, but, um, uh, the spindle wrenches work fine. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, except for the high speed and the no spindle lock, um, I really don't have too much bad to say about it. Um, 600 is high speed is probably the, my biggest complaint. Um, but you know what? Uh, it's... It's doable. I want you to get used to it. Uh, it's fine. Now this is a variable speed. Um, it's a reed drive. It's not electronic uh, variable speed. Um, that works really well. Uh, it's not too loud. Uh, I'll turn it on here. It's really not that loud. Uh, com compared, you know, compared to your table saw, or your jointer, uh, or some of the other machines that you have in the shop. Uh, it's really not that loud. Uh, I have heard a new, nice new belt from Napa or something like that does help with the sound uh, and reducing it. Um, but uh, I, I'll wait on that purchase um, until this belt breaks or um, I get a wild <laughs> my butt and go out and buy one. Um, so, all in all, uh, for $200, you really can't beat the price. Uh, you know, and most of your midi lathes, they start, I think the cheapest one I found was like, 500 bucks um so to get into in, into turning uh i highly suggest this it, it, it might only last you a year two year or two before you decide that you want something that can do uh you know massive bowls but um you know for 200 bucks you could sell this thing on craigslist and probably get a, a guaranteed 100 to 150 dollars out of it used on Craigslist to put towards your new lathe. Um, so uh, as a starter lathe, this is great. I highly recommend it. Um, no problems with it. Um, runs true, uh, runs runs smooth, uh, and everything works. So no complaints from me. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments section. Uh, and as, as always, please like and subscribe. Uh, and I will see you all later.